This video is brought to you by NordVPN. In the last few months, we've seen a stream of panicked headlines from more liberal media outlets about the rise of the far right in Europe. These usually talk about places like Italy and Germany, where Maloney's Brothers of Italy and the Alternative for Germany are challenging the traditional party system. However, while it's true that the right is on the rise in some European countries, this trend can be overstated, both because the right are losing ground in other European countries and because, in many cases, these new parties don't fit neatly into the left-right analytic. So in this video, we're going to have a look at the state of European politics and try to figure out, are Europeans really getting more right-wing? Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So when people argue that the right is on the rise in Europe, or that Europe is shifting right, they often point to a handful of choice examples. Italy, for example, is currently governed by a right-wing coalition led by Giorgia Maloney and her Brothers of Italy party, which is sometimes described as neo-fascist because of its roots in the Italian social movement, another Italian political party formed by supporters of Mussolini back in 1946. Even if, like Maloney, you don't agree with the neo-fascist label, it's hard to deny that the Brothers of Italy have picked up some pretty right-wing policies over the years. They used to be in favour of leaving the Eurozone, opposed to gay marriage, and in last year's campaign, Maloney proposed a naval blockade of the North African coast to limit immigration. But Italy isn't the only European country where the right seems to be on the rise. In Germany, for example, the right-wing Alternative for Germany, or AFD, is currently polling at about 20%, behind only the centre-right Christian Democrats. When they were founded back in 2013, the AFD were mostly focused on leaving the Eurozone and avoiding a repeat of the Eurozone crisis, but they morphed into a more typically right-wing party in the late 2010s, when they started pushing against Angela Merkel's liberal immigration policies, with a particular focus on what they saw as the cultural threat of Muslim immigration. Today, they're still focused on immigration, but they've also started attacking German environmental policies, especially a controversial Green Party policy to ban most oil and gas heating by 2024. Because of Germany's difficult past with right-wing politics, the mainstream parties have so far maintained a cordon sanitaire when it comes to AFD, refusing to include it in coalitions. But in July, Frederick Mars, the leader of the CDU, said that he could imagine working with the AFD at a local level. Similarly, in France, after months of protest over pension reforms and then police brutality, Macron's approval rating has dropped to 31%, and polls now suggest that he could lose to the more right-wing Marine Le Pen by about 10 points if the presidential election was rerun today. In Spain, the biggest party at July's election was the centre-right People's Party, who beat the socialists with the right-wing Vox Party in third place. In Poland, the right-wing incumbent Law and Justice Party is topping the polls ahead of the next election, which is due in October. And the Confederation are in third place with about 11%. For context, the Confederation are definitely to the right of law and justice. They want to massively shrink Poland's welfare state, and they've pledged to protect Poland from, quote, Euro-communists and globalists in Brussels and Davos. In Austria, the right-wing Freedom Party is topping the polls, despite the fact that, when they first joined the government in 1999, their right-wing politics were so unpalatable to the rest of Europe that Austria was effectively sanctioned by 14 other members of the EU. In Sweden, the largest party in government are the right-wing Sweden Democrats, who identify as national conservatives and spend a lot of time railing against Muslim immigration. Like the AFD, they were originally excluded from coalitions, but this only burnished their anti-establishment credentials and boosted their poll numbers, and Sweden's traditional right-wing parties had no choice to include them when they won roughly 25% of the seats at last year's election. In Finland, the anti-immigration and Eurosceptic Finns party came second in April's elections, and are now in a coalition with the centre-right national coalition. So, you get the idea. Clearly, in certain European countries, right-wing parties are doing pretty well. 
So does this mean that Europe's shifting right? Well, before we jump to that conclusion, a couple of caveats. First, this pattern isn't entirely uniform across the continent. In the UK, the centre-left Labour Party are currently 20 points ahead of the right-wing Conservatives. And while Le Pen might be ahead of Macron in a couple of polls, this often happens, but she still ends up losing. In Spain as well, the People's Party were unable to form a government with Vox, while recent polls suggest the Socialists have regained the upper hand. Second, a lot of these right-wing parties have had to significantly moderate their policies to win elections, especially on issues like the EU. The Brothers of Italy, the AFD, Marine Le Pen and the Finns Party have all previously advocated for leaving the EU or the Eurozone at some point in the past, but none of them want to actually leave and prefer instead to talk about reforming the EU. Something similar is true when it comes to immigration. Law and justice, for example, are constantly talking about the threat of mass immigration and political Islam. But Poland actually reliably issues the most residence visas in the EU. And earlier this year, they announced plans to take in 400,000 immigrants from certain countries, including a bunch of Muslim-majority ones. In Italy as well, Maloney has presided over a sharp spike in irregular arrivals and last week introduced legislation allowing for an unprecedented half a million legal immigrants in the next three years. In the UK, the Conservatives talk a tough game on immigration and small boats, but last year allowed for a record 600,000 people to come to the UK. Third, many of these parties aren't really right-wing per se. While they might sound pretty right-wing on cultural issues, many of them are actually pretty left-wing when it comes to economic issues. Le Pen, for example, has attacked Macron for not doing enough to help French people cope with the cost of living, and promised during the presidential campaign to spend more to help low-income voters. The Sweden Democrats are also more pro-welfare than Sweden's other right-wing parties. And while the AFT started off as a sort of neoliberal party, they oppose the Greens' environmental policies on the grounds that they're too expensive for ordinary German households, which is one of the reasons they've become more popular with poorer Germans. But you might also argue that these parties are more anti-establishment than right-wing, which would explain why most would-be AFD voters are apparently motivated by their dislike of the incumbent coalition rather than the AFD's policies. So what do you think? Is Europe actually becoming more right-wing? Or is this more about anti-establishment sentiment and the usual left-right analysis is a bit redundant? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Following stories and doing independent journalism often requires a fair bit of travel, from attending the NATO summit in Lithuania or Munich Security Conference, to exploring Aldi across Germany, or being forced to hang out with fellow Nebula creators. It's all right for some people. What is consistently annoying though is the technology. When you need to work from abroad or even just access the services you're used to, it's often way harder than you'd like, requiring endless verification, validation and authentications. As I'm sure you already know, that's when NordVPN comes into play, helping you connect to the internet wherever you are. Whether that's connecting back at home so your work account doesn't freak out, or connecting to another country from the comfort of your living room to get discounts on your next trip. That's right, very often other countries get cheaper prices for flights, with research finding US consumers pay up to three times more. NordVPN are actually currently running a major back-to-school promotion, which means that when you sign up for a two-year plan, you not only get a massive discount, but you also get an extra four months. That's a huge discount if you click our link. Plus, Nord will keep sponsoring TLDR if people click it. We've been told that sometimes when people hear us talk about NordVPN, they open up a tab, start searching, but they don't click our link. I'm certainly glad that they get the service, but you only get the discount and you only support the channel through that link. So if you're trying to improve our journalism by signing up for Nord, use our link when you do, and you'll get their great service at a discount.